Hi, this is Joe Macias from A Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about quadratic equations. I want to talk about uh, turning the standard form, the ax squared plus bx plus c, into the form uh, of a vertex form. And I want to do that by completing the square. So let's go over to the uh, graphing calculator. You might remember the last time we talked about the 1357 pattern. That was when we went over 1, you went up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, and then over 1, up 7. Okay, and this came when the a value was equal to 1. Um, we're going to take a look at one of those examples today. Um, I'm going to get up another new graph, if it'll let me. Why is it not letting me? Okay, because I'm not in it. All right, here we go. So we're going to bring up a new graphing calculator screen. Bring it in. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to need the inspector, but I'll go ahead and make the screen a little bit smaller. We're actually not even on this screen going to use the uh, graphing calculator directly. We're just going to basically using be the text uh, using the text portions of this. <clears throat> so we're going to look at y equals x squared plus 4x plus 5. And we're going to talk about completing the square. So let me copy paste this down to a new equation. You can see we're getting a graph automatically from that, but uh, that's not really what we're talking about here. We want to talk about turning this into vertex form. Right now this is in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The a is a 1, the b is a 4, and the c is a 5. And we want to turn that into a different form. Let me highlight that other form. The form we want is the form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, and that's going to give me an error because I didn't define a, h, and k, and I don't really care about that because we're just using the equation, not the uh, graph of it. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start to manipulate this. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate these first two terms. Now, when there's a 1 out front of the x squared, that is when a is equal to 1, uh, that makes this process a little bit easier. What we're going to do seems a little strange. What we're going to do is we're going to add 0 to this. This is our first step. And it doesn't look like that would be a very useful thing, but what we're highlighting is that we're going to put something in for that 0. It's important that it stays 0 because if it's not 0, it's going to change the equation. Okay, So let's go ahead and work on this one now. And what we're going to do is called completing the square. To complete the square, we're looking for three terms to be a perfect square. And that means we're going to use this 4 to help us figure out what this 0 is going to turn into. Uh, to figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to take 4, and I'm actually going to do a little side calculation here. We're going to take 4, and we're going to divide it by 2, then we're going to square it. Okay. Now if you do that calculation, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then you square it again, you're going to get 4. Okay. And like we talked about last time, if it's true, you're going to get a little equals 1 here, and it's, it's going to plot a little point over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take advantage of the fact that there's a 4 there, and we're going to put a 4 in there. Instead of that 0, guess what we're going to do? We're going to put 4, but that changes the equation. So we're going to subtract 4 right away. You'll notice then that the 4 minus the 4 is what? Well, it's the original 0 that we wanted. And so when I hit that again, and by the way, each time I hit this, I'm getting another graph, and each graph is on top of each other. If, for example, I made a mistake in here and said, you know, minus, I don't know, 6, all of a sudden, I would get a completely different graph. So the 4 tells me that it's going to put that graph right on top, and that kind of tells me that I'm doing the right thing. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to separate this into two parts. Uh, in fact, let me just go for a new equation there. We're going to go y equals, and we're going to have one part, and then we're going to have the rest. Well, the rest is going to be the minus 4 plus the 5. And the other part 
is going to be the first three terms. Remember, a term is anything separated by a plus sign, minus sign, or equal sign. So for the first three terms on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we have x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, we separate this out because this is a perfect square. Uh, you're going to see that in the next step. Let me go ahead and hit return. Again, we get our graph right on top of there. There's four graphs on top of each other right now. And there's going to be a fifth one here in a second. Now, this here, we're going to turn into uh, our perfect square. Now, that perfect square, we had evidence of it from this inner calculation, the 4 divided by 2. That actually tells us the number that we're going to have in the, inside the parentheses. We're going to have x, and it's either going to be a plus or a minus. When I have my students do this, I have them do a minus to start with. Uh, because when you're doing it with paper and pencil, you can always turn a minus into a plus sign. And then the number is the number that we have over here, 4 divided by 2. That's the 2 that's going to go right there. So we're going to type in a 2. Now the sign that this should be comes from the sign that's right here on the b term, if you will, the ax squared plus bx plus c now. So this term tells us that we should have a plus sign there, not a minus sign. So for me, I actually got to go back and delete it and uh, put a plus sign. And now the negative 4 plus the 5, well, we're going to simplify that. Uh, another way to think about that is 5 minus 4, which is positive 1. So we're going to add plus 1. Now the other thing I said we got to complete the square. Here's, here's the square part. That's the x plus 2 squared. If you now FOIL that out, you're going to get back to x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. Now let me hit return, and again we get another graph that's right on top of this. Now, the one other thing that I want to point out is that there's a, a number that's in front of this curve, and let me just make it one more time just so that we can emphasize it, and that number is a 1. It's implicit. Uh, for those that don't know what implicit is, implicit means it's either understood, uh, but quite frankly for most of my students I find out that it doesn't mean that it's understood, it just means that it's hidden. Um, it's only implicit after they get used to it, so in the beginning it's, it's just hidden. So if you like the word hidden, go with hidden. If you like implicit, go with implicit, but there's a one out front. Okay. Now, let's compare that to this form over here. You'll notice in comparison, if we compare that to this, there's a 1 where the a is. That's telling us that a is 1. There is a not a 2 where the h is, but rather a negative 2. Remember, we've got to keep this sign. So the only way that the h could end up giving us a plus 2 is if h itself was negative 2. And then the k is our 1. Now remember that the vertex is equal to hk. We're now going to take this equation and we're going to plot it. And uh, we're going to actually plot it on the other graph. And I'm going to talk about doing that as if we were doing it by hand. Why is it not? Okay, somehow I must be clicking out. Every time I click, oh, there we go. I'm not quite sure why it's giving me such a hard time there, but okay, remember the last time we were graphing y equals x squared. Well, what we're going to end up graphing, let me turn off the, the, the parabola part. Let me go ahead and put back in the fact that this is x squared plus 4x plus 5. And that's going to change where that graph is going to be. Uh, didn't want it to be seen, but that's okay. We'll just click it off. Uh, we're not going to worry about this. These are the old points, and this is just uh, the 1, 3, 5 pattern that we talked about. We're going to have that same pattern, but I want to talk about what we would do to graph this if we were to go ahead and use this equation. So let me copy this equation over to this other... I don't know why this is giving me so much trouble, but uh, let's copy it in. There it is. Okay. Now again, we want to talk about doing this by hand, so we don't want to look at the graph. How would we do this by hand? Well, remember, this is the form of a point, and what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the h and the k to find the vertex, because that's what h and k are. h is the x component of the vertex, 
the x part. So let's put in uh, negative 2. Remember we said that it's not positive 2, but rather negative 2 for h. And then the k part is this 1. So let's go down, change the f of u to a 1, and we're going to plot that point. And uh, it's giving us a nice, pretty point uh, like we had previously. Um, that is our vertex. Now, what do we do from there? Well, we're going to use the 1, 3, 5 pattern that we talked about. But now we're located, our x value is located at negative 2, and our y value is at 1. So, now this is much easier to do if you're just graphing it by, by hand. What we're going to do is go over 1 and up 1. In order for me to show you where that point is on here, I'm going to have to paste that in and change this. So this is going to be tedious for me, but you doing it on graph paper it should be much easier. So if I add 1 to the x value from the vertex, I'm going to get negative 1, and if I add 1 to the y value, the old y value, I'm going to get 2. Now it's going to give me an ugly point because this is a new, uh, uh, a new point. It, for some reason, does not copy over the uh, format of the old point. I wish it would. Um, but now, what's the next point? Well, the next point, we're going to go over 1 again, and this time we're going to go up 3. Remember that pattern, 1, 3, 5? So now if we go over 1, we're at 0, and if we add 3 to 2, we get our 5. And notice that that gives us a little bit of confidence because this is the y-intercept, and lo and behold, look at the, look at the value for the y-intercept. It's 5. If I make these 0, 0, 5 will be that point. So that looks pretty good. Let's put in a couple more. And so again, we're going to add 1 to the x, but now we're going to add how much? Does, does anybody remember? We added 3. What's next? We now add 5. So it should end up being at 10. So now we got that point. And let's do one more on that side. Okay, and so now the x value, we add 1 to that, we get 2. We added 1, we added to the y, we added 3 to the y, and now we added 5, and now we want to add 7. So if we put in 17, that should give us a point over there. Okay. Now typically when I'm doing this, when I graph this, I go over 1, up 1, I put a point there, and then I immediately put another point here when I'm doing it by hand. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that. I think you would realize to do that. So it would be over 1, up 1 this way, over 1, up 3 this way, and then over 1, up 5, and then over 1, up 7. So um, now we're not going to need those jagged lines. Let me get rid of those. And let's go ahead and just clean up these points real quick. Just make them look nice and pretty. Remember, we do that by going to Inspector. We fill in the inner color. And I like to make them a little smaller, so something like that. Okay. All right, so there's our points. Uh, and all we're going to do is turn on, in fact, let's turn on this graph right here, this equation. The graph for this equation, and lo and behold, it goes right through it. So if you had plotted those points, you could have drawn a nice smooth line through those points. This is how we use our vertex form uh, and the form y equals uh, ax uh, a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k to help us graph our equations very easily. Uh, just as a check, remember here's the original equation. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's change this color. That way you'll be able to see the difference there. Let's make this one green. Okay. All right. Now we'll turn around and we're going to just highlight that one and graph it. And now the black curve is the one that's on top of the green one. And if I, let's go over here and shut this one off, shut the green off, we'll see the black underneath. So there it is. So what that's telling us is this curve is exactly the same as this curve. That's what the other screen told us. And we can see that all the points are lying on the graph. Okay? Um, there is one more level of difficulty that is going to come up, and I'll do another video for it, and that is what happens if this isn't 1? For example, suppose I've got a 2 or a, or a 5 or a 1 third even in, in the uh, front of the x. What do I do? Um, well, we're going to do, there's an extra, extra added step that you got to do here in completing the square, as we did here, uh, and we'll show you that next time. It's, it's, it's not 
too, too much more complicated, but it is a little bit, uh, it's another step up. Let's just put it that way. But once you get the equation, once you get it in this form, it's really pretty easy to graph the equation, uh, especially if you're using the correct spacing on your graph paper. Well, that's it for uh, this particular video. Uh, let's go over to the splash screen here at the end. And uh, this has been A Tutoring Enterprises. We were looking at the standard form and turning it into the vertex form by completing the square. The specific one we looked at, the specific quadratic equation, was y equals x squared plus 4x plus 5. And uh, again, my business is A Tutoring Enterprises. That's me. This is the uh, first video I decided to put a little picture on so you get a chance to see what I look like. At some point, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do videos where I'm in them as well. Uh, so you can see my lovely face. Uh, my name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent.com. And my email is tutent at neb.rr.com. And you can call me at 402-421-3536. Um, I obviously am a tutor. I uh, tutor online and in person. I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. So if you're in Lincoln, Nebraska, I can do some in-person tutoring with you. Um, and if you're not, if you're in some, in some other city, give me a call. Uh, we can we can tutor on Skype, and uh, it's it's not that much different from actually tutoring uh, in person, as it turns out in most cases. So uh, if you're having some troubles, give me a call, and I can help you out. Um, if you found this video useful, um, feel free to donate some money. Uh, I could use a new computer. I'm, I'm on an older system now, and uh, I do this as a living. So uh, if you found this useful, go ahead and you know send a dollar or two to my PayPal account, 210 at Nebraska, neb.rr.com, same as my email address, and I would really appreciate that. Uh, thanks again, and I, I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if, not, if you're not using this yourself, maybe you can pass along the... Um, the video to somebody that uh, really can use it because uh, this is really a very different way of learning uh, algebra uh, and it's a very useful way to uh, get an understanding of what it is you're doing. So uh, thanks again for watching and uh, have a great day.